some of the soul of Rob Stone and all that. I was wondering, do you have any stories, as I, as I recall, that was kind of a broke, breakthrough moment? Well, first of all, let me say I don't feel I've had a career. You know, I feel like careers are for lawyers and people like that. Like, I just do what I do. You know, I'm going to play guitar whether people pay me or not. That's what I do. That's I like to play guitar. That's it. You know, I can take almost anything, <laughs> you know, if, if, I, if I can play a little bit and get, you know. So I, I don't, you know, careers are good things for people who, you know, climb a rung or something like that. For us, for artists, it's just who you are, you know. I would say the thing with with Bob Dylan and Rolling Thunder, that was a tremendous breakthrough in consciousness and in conscience, you know. Because, you know, I was working with, you know, Joni Mitchell was there, the great ans great poets were there, the great, um, you know, Allen Ginsberg was there, Sam Shepard, all these great writers. And there were, it was an amazing time for just listening and paying and hearing what everybody had to say. So I mean, it was a, that was like a master's class in, in writing and playing, performing. Uh, even Jacques Levy, who directed the Rolling Thunder show, you know, taught me a lot about how you pace a show, how, how you tell a story. There were multiple acts, so, the, so a lot of the challenge of that was to tell a story through these different acts and their songs so that by the time you got to the end of the show, the audience had, had heard something. They had gotten something that they could take with them. Here's the, other th here's the most important thing, I think, of all, is there, there are two ways to look at artists, or two ways to view artists. One is there are artists where the arrows all point out this way. And then there are artists where the arrows all point this way. Like Madonna is an example of a, the artist who all the arrows point toward her. She could suck the air out of this room in two seconds, you know. Nobody would be able to breathe. It would just be like, what do you want, your majesty, you know. <laughs> then there, then there, <laughs> what can I do for you? Now? Then there are artists like, you know, maybe you two or, you know, or I'll tell you, I think Arcade Fire is a really brilliant band who all the, ar all the arrows point out toward the audience and we get something from them. They're the, uh, they're the artists that you have to, that they want something from you and they're the artists, artists that want to give something to you. The, I'm only interested in the artists that want to give something to us. And that's, you were talking about having the poets and musicians and everything. It's, it seems like there's almost more sort of segregation. Everybody sort of stays in their own lane. Mm -hmm. where there used to be a lot more cross-pollination, and there's a little bit less of that now because everyone's right. so focused on, you know, I'm going to make it as a musician, and they don't yeah. think they could draw inspiration from maybe an author or a poet or right, a, yeah. an art, a painter, or, you know, something like that. Yeah, cause, because at the end, it, again, it's all storytelling. The pre, right. You know, it's all, in the beginning, you know, it's <clears throat> it started in Greece, uh, this is what we call media now. And in the beginning, uh, the, at the Acropolis or wherever it was, a guy would get up and tell a story, and that was called a monologue. And then there was an innovation, which they would have two people, and the two people would talk to each other, and a story would be told, and that was called a dialogue. And then there was another innovation, which there were two people talking to each other, and there was a third person that would say, well, this guy's saying this about you, and then he would go over there and say, this guy's saying this about you, the devil, you know, Puck. And that was drama. That was the beginning of drama. So all drama is that two people talking to each other with a third person cr causing problems. <laughs> but uh, that that is a, a natural, what was the... Well, I was just saying there's not as much cross-pollination. Oh, yeah. Well, so, so but any, but at any rate, that is all of it. That's it. That's storytelling. You right. Know? And the, the painters are telling stories, the, the filmmakers are telling stories, the musicians are telling stories, and that's the, yeah. that's the key, that's the thing, that's the reality of it. Right. I mean, I guess we can talk about the, the celebrity culture, too, as, yeah. which is part of that American Idol, like, you're going to be able, you know, American Idol, I, I've never watched it, but my, I, I've never watched, I don't watch television, but my impression of it is, from what I've, from hearing everything. It's kind of hard heard, to get away from. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that it's people imitating other people trying to get famous. You More know? or less, yeah. Like, Kim Kardashian got famous because she was friends with Paris Hilton. Like, where does that, where does that happen? Like, who cares? <laughs> who wants to be famous anyway? You know, why don't you just be good? This is like. Right. Is is I, I want to know is Kim Kardashian good or not? You know I don't care if she's famous. Is she good? And if she's good, what is she good at? 
By the way, I have a, I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's another ingredient, I think, is that people just want the, the spotlight and they don't really care. Yeah, they don't care if they're doing anything while they're right. in it. I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> love me. Well, you know that's that's why we have iPhones and I, you know, I, you know it's all like I, you, know. you know, mobile media. It's all like identity. It's people looking for identity, and what we're getting is this pathetic sort of identity. I identity. <laughs> you know. Yes. I do think it improves the sound quite a bit because you're adding you're adding harmonics back in, because the process of converting, especially, I mean, that's this is one of the things we do with code. We've we've researched all this so deeply, the harmonic structure and the overtone structure of music and the and a, and a harmonic structure of a piece you're using. But even just running a digital signal through an analog piece of equipment will begin to add harmonics back in. Because the electronic equipment itself adds harmonics, right? Like feedback, you know, like you play guitar through an amp and you, you start getting some feedback and then another high tone starts, you know? Well, those things start, you can start adding those back in and, and you can start creating a much more resonant, complex signal for people and, and you know, experience for people. So no, I don't think it does damage, it can, you know, any transfer can be botched by a human being, you know, but the, but the carefully done transfer from digital to analog is, is always a good idea. It's a more stable, more, uh, it's a more uh, uh, robust medium. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes? Uh, relating to the last question, um, if you're recording Well, you know, so all the boards, unless you're mixing completely in the box, which is something I would really recommend not doing because the combining that goes on in the box in Pro Tools is very different and it introduces a tremendous amount of errors and, and distortion and all kinds of strange uh, anomalies into the signal. So, you know, I would just say use as much Class A electronics is the strongest signal pass, the biggest wires, you know, use all the best equipment you can around the digital. Yeah, all of that stuff, because then you can, you can um, humanize it, you know. I, I mean, I'll, I'm looking forward to the day when we're past digital storage of music. I, I think it's a short term. I think it's been a diversion. It's cheaper, it's, it's got a lot of advantages, and you know, it's been used. Music and pornography have been used to set up a system that, that people were hoping would uh, save the world. You know, it remains to be seen. I can, I'm doubtful at this point. I feel the internet, as we are using it today, has failed. It's certainly failed the artists. It's failed to provide the artists either good sounding versions of what they do or money, you know. Uh, uh, Lady Gaga, two years ago, the year before last, there was one video that she made <clears throat> that she had 200 million hits on, one video on YouTube, and from all of her, all of her internet income was $10,000, and that's Lady Gaga. How are you gonna get by, man, you know, as a guitar player, it's, with that kind of deal? It's a bad deal. Right. Yeah. I think I think I think thing, there's a bright future for artists. Listen, the only thing we make in the United States that we sell the rest of the world anymore are arms and music. You know, yeah. movies, media. So we have you know, music. It, recorded music is the United States as wine is to France. You know, it's something that we do that we developed. That that is is unique to us. You know, we have regions. You know, France has Champagne. We have the Mississippi Delta. 
It's a, it's, it's, it's a, tr we have a national treasure and it's our greatest asset. And we're, we're just throwing it away right now. We're, we've, re we, we're taking our greatest asset. We're putting out to the world for free. We're not, we're not enforcing any kind of standards or, uh, you know, standards for quality or for, uh, quantity, you know, for, uh, getting paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we're that. Yes, that's. I spend a lot of my time actually on this, on on uh, arts education. Yeah. Is that any Fort Worth that you're uh, affiliated with? Uh, yeah. You know, there's the Texas Music Project. Do you know about that? That's putting instruments and and. So yeah, we're working with the Texas Music Project too. You know, Plato <laughs> said that an education stands on three legs. The Edu uh, athle uh, academics, athletics, and the arts. And he said, without any th one of those three legs, the uh, the education would fall over. You know. So we've done that in this country. We've affected. I mean, y'all are in our arts program at Southwest, right? So, right. Oh, I'll come. I'll come help. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to pitch in, man. It is such a pleasure, you know, you know having you here, in effect, not of course, it's the African American, it's the grandfather of what we're doing. We get the t-shirt made up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Willie Nelson is surely the grandfather. Right. <laughs> Happy to oh. do it.